Wait, wait, give me a second. I'll uh, record this. Okay, so uh, oh, give me one second. I'll double check that everyone is uh, joining. Uh, okay, sometimes people ask me for password last moment. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's start. So it's my big pleasure to introduce Christian Boning from uh, War University of Warwick. And Christian will uh, talk about rigid, not infinitely rigid surfaces of general type with ample uh, canonical divisor. Yeah, thank you very much to give a talk in this uh, brave new framework. And uh, yeah, as Vanya said, I'll talk about uh, the construction of rigid, not infinitesimally rigid surfaces, um, general type with K ample. Uh, so these will be surfaces um, with Kuranishi space, uh, a non-reduced point. So I'll say more about that later. Um, and constructed as certain branch covers of a blow-up of P2 with branch divisor constructed from suitable line arrangements. So this uh, will remind uh, experts in the field of, well, work of lots of other people uh, done in the past, um, Catanese and Padini and Fantecchi, uh, Manetti, Hertzebruch, certainly, and uh, uh, certainly all of this inspired uh, this work a great deal, but uh, this work is not a straightforward corollary of, of the results of these authors. So there are some, uh, so some genuinely new ideas are needed. And it's joint work, it's actually joint work in progress with Hans Christian von Bootmann and Roberto Pignatelli. Uh, actually, this uh, whole project originated from a talk given by Roberto in our Warwick online seminar in the summer term earlier this year. Um, so this talk has two parts and the first uh, part um, is devoted to um, line arrangements and some incident schemes, the associated incident schemes. Um, are really rather combinatorial projective synthetic object it's rather elementary still very interesting um, so the first definition also um, um, at first sight rather dull so uh, so a line arrangement is not a finite uh, set of lines in p2 of the complex numbers just to fix notation so this is finite set lines two of the complex numbers and um, so it looks like this of course I can only draw real arrangements or something like this yes and uh, I want to assume in what follows that these standard coordinate points are so one zero zero and Zero one zero and uh, zero zero one and finally one 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 are always among the mutual intersection points of lines in the arrangement. So that the action of projectivity is later on. So we assume these are among the mutual intersections. of lines in, let's call it L, it's a line arrangement L. And um, uh, another bit of terminology I want to introduce is, um, so points in P2 through which pass three or more lines of the arrangement are called singular points of the arrangement. So this is a singular point of the arrangement and this is one as well. So. Uh, So, so these are called the singular points. Hmm. Of the arrangement. And we'll have to blow them up later on. And uh, so that's a line, a very elementary 
uh, object still not completely uninteresting. I mean, I just uh, recall that, for example, for real arrangements, there are already rather interesting combinatorial properties. For example, the uh, Sylvester Galai theorem. If you have a real arrangement, then either all of the lines of the arrangement pass through a single point, so you have a star of lines, or there is a point in P2 through which pass exactly two of the lines of the arrangement. And uh, this is completely false for complex arrangements. For example, if you take the dual of the Hesse configuration, we have, a, have an arrangement violating that. And also it is well known, uh, well, going back to work, at least the Furzebruch maybe even uh, earlier, um, that, uh, well, um, there is a rich uh, interchange of information between properties of line arrangements and properties of surfaces. And you can even deduce certain combinatorial, interesting combinatorial properties of line arrangements from uh, the deep properties of surfaces. Uh, so the information goes both ways. So for example, there's this fact that if you have an arrangement which is not a star of lines uh, and uh, it is double point free, then it has to have at least one triple point. So one point through which pass three lines of the arrangement. Uh, and as far as I know, this uh, the only known proof of this due to Kelly uses the Bogomol of Mio Kayao inequality for surfaces to um, deduce that, uh, uh, this fact about arrangements. Um, so um, another definition uh, that I use, so this is a slightly unwieldy definition, or awkward, but uh, uh, it's, it's necessary to explain uh, what is going on later on. So I want to define a generalized incident scheme. And uh, um, so for that, I assume uh, I'm given uh, in P2 uh, a set of points Call this P, and I divide it into two subsets. So I have P1 up to Pm. I want to think of these points as being variable, the variable points, and then I have some points Q1, Qm prime, which I want to think of as being fixed. Yeah, so their homogeneous coordinates take on fixed set of numerical values, whereas I imagine these P1 up to Pm can vary. Uh, and, and so you'll see in a second what I mean by this. And I'm also given lines, sort of lines, G. And again, I want to say that I'm given some variable lines, L1 up to Ln, and then some further fixed lines, M1 up to Mn prime. So these are variable and the remaining ones fixed. And I want to view um, the variable points P1, um, Pm, and the lines L1 to Ln uh, as uh, elements. We're in the natural parameter space, so in this projective space P, which is just uh, P2 to the M times, and then P2 dual, the dual projective plane to the N. Yes. And then, uh, so, so given all this, what is a generalized incident scheme? So a generalized incident scheme. Um, yeah, um, and uh, I say uh, associated to fixed data, the Qs and the lines, mj, that are fixed beforehand. Uh, this is a closed subscheme. I in this projective space, yes, parametrizing the variable points and variable points, uh, defined 
by um, equations uh, of the following type. Um, so I've I also assume given um, should have said this before. Maybe I assume given uh, a relation uh, on the set of points and lines. given that. And then the equations are just the natural ones. So whenever I have a pair R comma N consisting of a point and a line in R, I demand that R lie on N, meaning that N of R is zero. So this is, this is an equation, yes? So I can view N as a linear form and R just uh, is a point in P2. And uh, depending on whether n, so, so for these equations yeah, could have various by degrees depending on whether n is variable or fixed and depending on whether r is variable or fixed. So for example, if you have just one point and one line, yes, in P2 that you look at, then uh, this, this projective space would be the product of P2 and P2 dual. And uh, then this equation could be uh, of by degree one one if both the line and the point are variable or zero one or one zero uh, or even tautologically could could also be tautologically satisfied or not satisfied if both of them are fixed yes so let me give you an example so maybe that an example will uh, will help to uh, elucidate what I mean here. So this is an example that we'll use in the sequel. Um, let me okay, use some more high-tech technology codes. Um, sorry, uh, no, that doesn't work. Shit, lost that. Okay, so uh, for example, I could uh, have three lines and three points that are fixed and I'd form a triangle like this, and I assume these are the points 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and this is the point 0, 0. So, so everything red is fixed. And uh, besides, I could have uh, three variable points, so I draw them green, which are, however, constrained by uh, incidence relations that I impose to lie on the lines, the red lines of the red triangle as drawn here. Yeah, so this green point here is constrained to lie on this red line, this green line is constrained to lie on that red line, so, so forth. And I also assume I'm given three variable lines, which I also draw in green and which are required to connect the green variable points as shown in the picture. So this is a variable, yes. And uh, so in other words, I would then get an incident scheme in this case, uh, which would be a closed up scheme of P2 cubed times P2 uh, dual cubed uh, which would parameterize precisely these uh, green triangles that are inscribed in this red fixed triangle. Yes. So of course, this is not a zero-dimensional uh, scheme. So these points here could move here along these uh, axes, of course. And uh, so that's a positive dimensional. Yes. But now uh, what we do and uh, what we'll use to construct our surfaces uh, in a minute is we, we soup up this example, so we, uh, so we uh, modify it a little bit uh, in the following way. Um, so I want to rigidify this situation in the following way. I start again with my red triangle, which is the same red triangle. So these three fixed points here and 
three fixed lines. Oh. Yes. Um, and uh, also my green triangle inscribed in the red one, like this, yes, so three variable points constrained to lie on these red sides of the red triangle and three green lines joining them so that the whole thing uh, forms a, a green triangle inscribed in the red one. But now I rigidify the whole thing by choosing three further points called, well, say P, Q and R, which are fixed and uh, where I demand by additional incidence relations that these green uh, sides or green lines forming the triangle additionally pass through P, Q and R as shown. Yes. And um, so that gives me another generalized incident scheme now associated to fixed data, these fixed points P, Q, R and these three uh, coordinate points and the three lines of the red triangle. So this is again an incident scheme here uh, in, uh, well again, P2 cubed times P2 dual uh, cubed. And uh, let me call this a PQR scheme, you want of a better name. Um, could also call it a triangle scheme, so PQR scheme. And uh, it turns out, so if you just do the comp well, you can also see it a little more conceptually. Um, but uh, I just tell you that in general, uh, so in general, uh, uh, the scheme consists of two points, consists of two reduced points. So that's the general, um, that's the general situation. But for special values of P, Q, and R, uh, it could happen that this is a non-reduced point, a double point. Yeah, so for special values, so but for special values of P, Q, and R, uh, this I here, say this depends on P, Q, R, so for special values of PQR, I, PQ, uh, can be uh, a double point. Yes. So, I mean, spec, see, joint X mod X squared. Yeah. Yeah. Could be a double point. And uh, that happens, uh, well, every now and then, quite frequently, uh, for special choices. And uh, now we want to use these special non-reduced PQR schemes to construct our surfaces. However, uh, to construct the surfaces, we cannot make do with fairly general generalized incident schemes. We need a particular type of incident scheme to construct such a surface. And um, for that, uh, so for that, I need to introduce some further terminology. So first, line arrangement as above, line arrangement L, defines in a natural way um, in a natural way uh, a generalized incident scheme um, associated to fixed data um, Q1 up to Q4, and that's it, no further fixed data. And uh, for such a generalized incident scheme associated to fixed data, just Q1 up to Q4, uh, simply an incident scheme. without any further qualifier. And uh, so how does the line arrangement do that? Well, uh, well, very naturally, so for each singular point, uh, except uh, possibly 
uh, well, Q1, Q4, you introduce a variable point, yeah. And for each line of the liner, you uh, introduce a variable line. And uh, then the incidences in this incident scheme uh, associated with the line arrangement are just the ones uh, that you see in the given line arrangement. So these, these are the incidences we impose. Yeah, so in this way, a uh, line arrangement determines an incident scheme I have uh, associated to this line arrangement. And um, what we want to do now is we want to produce an incident scheme uh, associated to some line arrangement in this way, so of this form, I of L, that is isomorphic to a non-reduced PQR scheme. Yes, so for a PQR scheme, you have further fixed data. Yes, you have more fixed data. Uh, in particular, you have these points PQR, uh, given beforehand, and so this is not entirely trivial. But um, you can do that, and so there's this little theorem here that we proved. Uh, so um, there are uh, incident scheme, incident schemes, I of L of the, yeah, of the form. IFL, so coming from a line arrangement in the way described of uh, that are isomorphic to uh, a PQR scheme uh, which is a non-reduced point. Yes, and um, well, so so I would uh, so because the time is uh, short, I will not give you the proof of this. I mean, I can tell you more about the proof if you want to uh, towards the end of the uh, talk. It's um, well, it's uh, either uh, if you unravel it trivial or or thoroughly messy. Uh, depending on the way you look at it. The main idea is to construct PQR in a certain predefined way, starting from Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, these four coordinate points, which are allowed to be fixed data for uh, an incident scheme coming from a line arrangement, uh, and um, yes, constructing them in a certain uh, special way that ensures that uh, you end up uh, with a line arrangement whose incident scheme is isomorphic uh, to a given PQR scheme you started with. And uh, that is actually, it is not that simple because for that to work, you need PQR to be points that are not too simple. So if you choose them with integer coordinates, say, and uh, co prime integer coordinates, they uh, need to have moderately. Well, they, they need to have not too small height. They need to be a little co more complicated for this to work. And uh, so actually one needs a computer search to find uh, suitable PQRs and then to find uh, a suitable line arrangement such that the incident scheme associated to this line arrangement is isomorphic to, to the given PQR scheme, which is non-reduced. So we found, um, so we found uh, one such a uh, line arrangement L, and I call this L hard in the following because it's what we want. And this has 34 lines and 51 singular points. And it was the easiest we could come up with in this construction. Anyway, so that's that's the way out.
Okay, so this uh, is um, the part uh, about arrangements. Now comes um, the part about surfaces, the connection to surfaces. So I want to talk about algebraic surfaces um, constructed from such line arrangements and the deformation theory. Um, so we assume we're given um, a line arrangement um, L, yeah, with lines L1 up to Ln and singular points um, say P1 uh, up to PM. And uh, later on, we will always choose um, this special arrangement that we've constructed that has an associated incident scheme that is such a reduced point. But then the general construction of a surface starting from this arrangement is as follows. So what do you do? I mean, this is a well-known construction, actually. You blow up uh, the singular points of the arrangement. So this is uh, the blow up of P2 and the singular points of the arrangement. Yes, it gives you the surface S. And uh, then uh, you put B, this will be your branch divisor. Um, this will be the union, of the strict transforms of all the lines in the arrangement together with all the exceptional divisors. The union of the strict transforms uh, Li bar uh, and the exceptional divisors Ej. All right, and uh, yes, the final thing really uh, uh, serious has happened. Yes, given your arrangement. Um, okay, okay, you blow. Uh, up P2, you get this, yes. And now what we, what we want to construct is we want to construct a, a covering as tilde, um, well, um, as tilde or to be smooth, a totally ramified Galois covering of uh, S uh, with a Galois group sum elementary billion P group uh, and um, branch divisor B, uh, such that, well, quite a few more properties hold that I'll spell out in a second. So we, we, we now aim to construct the following. So um, a smooth, Totally ramified. So I'll say what this means in a second. Totally ramified Galois cover. Pi S tilde to S uh, with group say um, G, some elementary billion P group of the form Z mod P to the R. Um, right, um, um, with, uh, uh, and later on actually, uh, for, uh, well, this El Hart suit, uh, El Hart, we can, um, well, we can choose different primes and R's that work probably, but one that, well, and which we've checked everything for now is P equals seven and R is four. So that's one, one that works. We want to construct such a smooth, totally ramified Galois cover with this uh, group and branch divisor um, branch divisor B, um, such that um, ultimately, well, the uh, Kuranishi space uh, space of deformations of S tilde is isomorphic to our incident scheme I uh, L hat. Yes. Yes, yeah, so that 
surface S tilde inherits precisely this non-reduced point as Kuranishi space, as its space of deformations. And uh, okay, so totally ramified, so, so smooth here, smooth means just as tilde is smooth, so it's endowed with a faithful action of the here, and simply the quotient for that action. This is a finite flat map, this is just the quotient map here. And uh, the branch divisor is sh uh, should be as B, and um, well, totally ramified. You could say that the the inertia subgroups of all components of the ramification divisor upstairs um, ought to generate G, or or this, that this covering doesn't factor non-trivially over uh, an entire cover of S. Okay, this is just a technical assumption. Um, so this is the strategy. That, uh, so, so we want to construct such a surface as tilde. And uh, we also want that as tilde is of general type with canonical bundle ample. Yeah? So this is what we want to achieve. Um, okay, so how do we do that? So of course, um, well, first we need to find a way to construct many such covers. And luckily this has been done uh, by Pardini so um, we construct. Um, so we construct uh, the cover here. This cover um, uh, using uh, a method uh, by Pardini and further. Well, actually, maybe originally due to Catanese uh, and put in final form by Pardini, or actually maybe Pardini further developed by Padini, Fantecchi, and Manetti, and many others. Um, so we construct this cover uh, from so-called building data for the cover. Um, yes, so you may know how to do this if you're an expert in this. So this is a, uh, so uh, let me just say, um, so these building data are, well, almost combinatorial data that allow you to construct such covers. Um, so let me be brief here. So what, what are building data? Well, they consist of two maps. You have two maps here from G to the effective divisors on S. Um, yes, so this is maybe called uh, D here, signing to G and G divisor dg, this should have image your branch divisor, branch divisor, so the union of these dgs is your branch divisor, uh, zero should be the zero divisor, and then you ought to, to have another map from uh, the group of characters uh, of g to uh, the Picard group of s, so assigning to some character chi, just to line bundle, uh, chi, uh, and uh, these ought to satisfy various properties. So uh, the most important property is such that uh, P, uh, so there's a divisibility property. So P L chi should be in, so in pick uh, of the surface, P L chi should be equal to the sum over G, and then you pair chi with G, and by dg. And so this pairing is just a lift uh, of the usual pairing between characters and group elements uh, such that this number is in set from zero to p minus one. So you choose this lift. So this lift set of the natural pairing between characters and group elements. So this, and uh, then you want so you want this just to give you the flavor of what you need. And um, you want extra properties to ensure that S tilde is smooth. So you need that whenever DG and DG prime intersect, that G and G prime uh, are linearly independent in, in your group G, viewed as a ZP vector space in this case. And um, yes, uh, uh, and um, right, and you want it. Uh, the, the G is occurring to generate G. 
so the g's attached to non-zero dgs for the cover to be totally ramified. Okay, so this is just a bunch of stuff uh, that allows you to construct such covers. Of course, it's complicated, it's confusing, but it can be done. Uh, and, um, and given a cover, not just to see uh, what these players d g and g and l chi actually are. So l chi, for example, are just, if you're already given a cover, then if you push down uh, over tilde, then this will split into certain uh, character sheaves or eigen sheaves. Uh, yes, and, uh, and these are the l chi's. And the g's, are, uh, the g's, these labels for the divisors really uh, arise from the um, inertia subgroups of the components of the ramification divisor and the way they uh, act on the say, normal spaces to these components of the ramification divisor in the generic point of the respective component. Okay, so this, is, this can be done using Padini. Okay, so well, we have a pretty good uh, way to, co to construct lots of uh, covers in this way. Okay, so this is how we get covers. And then in second step, yes, once we have this ability to construct tons of covers, we need a way to control that the Kuranishi space of S tilde is under certain favorable conditions isomorphic to this incident scheme uh, we started with. And uh, for this, we proceed in two steps. So we first note that uh, this incident scheme, let me just write off a hard suit, this incident scheme. This is always uh, the same uh, in our construction as the space of deformations of the pair S comma B. So this is the uh, space of, uh, of deformations that, that parametrizes uh, deformations of S together with uh, um, the closed, let me say, closed embeddings of, oops, sorry, of uh, the irreducible components of B. Yes, yeah, so this parameterizes deformations of the surface S together along with compatible deformations of uh, the uh, embeddings of the irreducible co components, which are smooth in our case, where B is a simple normal crossing divisor of the irreducible components of B. So this can also be thought of as some you know, fiber product of relative Hilbert schemes of the Kuranishi family of S in this case. So this is just the stability of minus one curves under deformations proved by Kodaira and the fact that we can blow these down in the family. So this is a general fact. But also Vakil, by the way, uses in, in his work on Murphy. Uh, so I'll come to that when I put this into perspective. So this is um, the first step. And then in the second step, we use um, uh, results, or we, we use, uh, say, uh, uh, techniques developed by uh, Fanteki Padini and uh, by Manetti. Um, yes, to show that, um, well, let me just be very imprecise. I can spell this out very precisely. They forced me to, uh, but let me just say under certain uh, cohomological vanishing conditions, uh, 
um, the core initial space here that the, of S2 uh, is really isomorphic to uh, the space of deformations of uh, S comma B. Um, yes, yes. So, and this is a this is the technically hairy part because uh, you see, um, well, I didn't write down vanishing conditions and I won't in the main part of the talk uh, because I still want to put what we did into perspective and state our main result. But uh, the point is that Fantecchi, Padini and Manetti morally show that everything is fine if the building data for the cover uh, are ample enough in a certain sense, uh, these LKIs. Uh, but for us, they are not. Uh, so they are, do not satisfy the, the beautiful conditions that Fantecchi, Padini and Manetti spell out for this conclusion to hold. So we need to uh, slightly tune uh, methods or slightly, uh, well, we use the same techniques they use, but we need to refine uh, their criteria to, to arrive at this conclusion also uh, in our setting where we deal with uh, with uh, uh, building data produced from line arrangements. So this is rather um, difficult, um, but it's technically involved. It's, 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 it's a lot of work. Okay, so once we've this, then uh, we get the following. So then we get Our main theorem. Um, uh, there exists um, a surface uh, S tilde. Maybe let me also call this S tilde hard because it's ultimately produced from this line arrangement L uh, hard uh, of general type. Um, and we also compute, we have to compute that it's canonical is ample. We do this using essentially the Nakamoshi uh, criterion. So this can be done, um, computation, and uh, Kuranishi space, a non-reduced point. namely isomorphic to this incident scheme uh, associated to L hard. And um, uh, I can also give you the numerical characteristics of this particular surface. So for this particular surface, we computed, I mean, just as a sanity check, but also for its intrinsic interest, that K square is 1,260,966. Is one hundred and fifty one thousand eight hundred and two. So the ratio k square on chi is approximately eight point three, which is not too bad because uh, on the one hand uh, it's that uh, this uh, surface uh, at least stands a fair chance to be rigid because uh, you see the number of moduli is somehow bounded below by ten uh, chi minus two. K square, so that this uh, should better be negative. So actually, this ratio should be bigger than five, which it is, and it should also be smaller than or equal to nine, um, not to violate the Bogomol of Miyao-Gayao inequality. So at least in that respect, um, um, we haven't totally. Uh, uh, so this is consistent. Um, um, and um, this is just one surface. It's not the only one, we believe, of, uh, that uh, can be constructed uh, that has this property having, uh, so, so K ample is rather generic. Uh, so that's, that, that tends to be true always once you have that surface uh, constructed from sufficiently complicated line arrangement. Uh, you can construct other surfaces starting from the same line arrangement with different types of building data, uh, but uh, we haven't really finalized the entire computation. But, but I just want to point out that this is not 
uh, a solitary single surface out there completely on its own. There are probably many, many such surfaces, uh, but they're just very difficult to construct. But um, yeah, you could use the same line arrangement and building data. You could also use other uh, PQR schemes to begin with. Now, um, okay, um, so maybe in the, okay, I still have 10 minutes or so. Or five minutes. Um, so in in the remaining um, a few minutes, let me just put this into perspective um, and make a few remarks to um, to tell you why. First of all, this is uh, interesting, uh, and um, what has been done on this before. Uh, so first of all, I have to tell you that uh, we were not the first ones to construct such a surface. So actually, I told you the project originated from a talk given by Roberto Pignatelli in our seminar earlier this spring, and he reported on work by uh, Ingrid Bauer and himself. So they proved um, in 2018, I believe, um, uh, they produce such examples yeah, uh, of surfaces of general type with Kuranishi space, uh, spaces, uh, non-reduced points. These surfaces don't have canonical bundles ample. Actually, they have minus two curves on them and are constructed as certain dissingularizations of nodal surfaces. And some of the presence of the minus two curves is in some sense, really responsible for the Kuranishi spaces to become non-reduced. Uh, so they, these surfaces that they construct have infinitesimally rigid canonical models, and uh, the non-reducedness somehow comes from from the minus two curves on the dissingularizations. So they construct. Um, um, so surfaces. Of general type uh, that are, yeah, let me say that are rigid, not infinitesimally rigid. Um, but uh, uh, with canonical, not ample. Um, uh, so these are they, these are resolutions. These are resolutions of certain carefully constructed uh, nodal surfaces that themselves are infinitesimally rigid. And then they use uh, a theorem or results by Burns and Wahl. Um, yeah, so, so, so results by Burns and Wahl that uh, relate the space of deformations of a neighborhood of the exceptional locus and the deformations of the singularities and the deformations of the uh, resolution, deformations of the canonical model to, to get that, uh, that these surfaces, these resolutions are actually rigid but not infinitesimally rigid. And so somehow the, 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 the interest, uh, the initial interest of our project for us was to find examples of such surfaces that somehow, um, uh, well, where the non-reducedness somehow uh, has a say more modular uh, reason behind it. So, so where this non-reduced, so especially where the canonical models of these surfaces are also rigid, but not infinitesimally rigid. Yes. Um, so second remark to put this into perspective, uh, this answers, but already the result by Ingrid Bauer and Roberto answers, uh, an old question by Kodaira, uh, probably also Moro, so it's, it's, it's set down in this famous book by Kodaira and Moro, Complex manifold, maybe it's also in some article by Kodara and Spencer. 
uh, they ask, uh, so this was around 1970, they ask whether there are any examples of, well, rigid, not infinitesimally rigid, uh, compact complex manifold. Yes, we that these were probably uh, hard to construct. And then it took a long time till they were constructed by Bauer and Pignatelli only in 2018. Um, so this is nice. Now you may say, okay, I remember Vakil, Vakil really uh, had this work in 2006 already, a uh, beautiful work on Murphy's Law for moduli spaces. And um, so what's the difference here? So Vakil, let me say, uh, proved, um, let's say a stable, um, stable version of the result. Um, uh, what does that mean? So uh, he proved a version of the result to smooth parameters. So what he looks at, uh, 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 he looks at so-called, um, he looks at singularity types. Um, and what is a singularity type for him? Well, he looks at pointed schemes, x comma p, and uh, he considers them as elementary equivalent, x comma p and y comma q, if there's a smooth morphism from that pointed scheme, x comma p to y comma q, to equivalence relation generated by that. And then uh, he proves that uh, every singularity type uh, that is a finite type of a z uh, occurs on some uh, modular space of uh, also surfaces of general type with k even very ample, I believe. Uh, but you see that here you have the freedom to add or, or subtract uh, smooth parameters, yes. Yeah, for example, uh, uh, a given x would, for example, be equivalent to x times some uh, big affine space, yes. So um, you can't control in this whole and in this approach by Vakil that you end up with something that is actually rigid. And uh, also as input, he uses Nyoff's universality theorem um, um, for uh, incident schemes that um, I got another proof or more transparent proof by Lafogg. And uh, if you want to, to prove that, you need to uh, pass to this stable set up right away. So you need to reserve the right to, to add parameters to get. So our, this result uh, doesn't really, doesn't follow as an e easy corollary from Bakke's work, though, of course, the whole setup, the whole uh, punchline of the argument is, is very much inspired by Bakke's work, obviously. Um, so the, taking a billion covers, yeah, produced from some such line arrangements. Um, that's Vakil. Uh, I should also mention maybe two names uh, now that I talk a little bit about the history. Uh, there's Kapovic, uh, there's an article by Kapovic and Milson. Uh, they prove a non stable version uh, of Nyoff's universality theorem. Um, Uh, in their article. Um, so, but, um, but, so this looks rather promising, or you could think that then we only uh, would have to use Kapovic and Nelson's uh, but uh, that doesn't work either for us because their notion of uh, incident scheme is slightly different from what we need. Or what they really look at is what they call uh, finite-based realizations of, of abstract arrangements. So they start with some abstract arrangement of something, ab some abstract entities called points and lines, but then in the realization of this, some of these points might map to the same point in P2, and some of the lines might map to the same point in P2. So this realization need not be injective, and that causes a lot of trouble. But that causes a lot of trouble because then uh, the surfaces we construct do not inherit uh, 
inherit the behavior of these incident schemes because they are not not uh, not suitable for, for this construction. However, the construction that they do inspired our construction of PQR schemes uh, in a sense. So we we looked at the article and then <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It offered a lot of inspiration for us. Anyway, let me maybe finish uh, because the time is almost up with an open question. So still open. Uh, we'd hope we'd hope to get to this or get to the bottom of this by now. We don't know of the Gizek, so we do not know. We don't know if the Gizek moduli space. Uh, the Gizek moduli space. Uh, of uh, a still the heart is also a non-reduced point. Um, yes, so somehow for this it would be sufficient to know that the automorphism of this is still the heart are reduced to this scoop of deck transformations G that we uh, had there a little earlier on. And uh, the article by F uh, Fantecchi and P there's an article by Fantecchi and Padini that uh, deals with this issue and gives criteria uh, for it to hold, but the criteria are not satisfied in our example. So it could be that we uh, are, we, we might eventually be able to use their methods or their, their techniques uh, to arrive at the same conclusion, but. Um, the theorem certainly do not imply it. So we don't know, we don't know. That would be an interesting open question. I mean, certainly you would expect that, why shouldn't it be possible that also the Gizeka modular space for such a surface of general type would be a non-reduced point? I mean, uh, in, in a sense, there's nothing that would obstruct them being arbitrarily pathological as well, but uh, we haven't proven that. Uh, yeah, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Christian, thank you very much. Uh, let's thank Christian. Thank you. Uh, thank you for a very nice talk. Uh, many comments in chat and some of the, and, uh, okay, questions. If you have a question, please ask directly Christian in Zoom. Any what question? Is, uh -huh. Yes, yes. What is neuron severity of this surface? Uh, um, it's a good question. I don't know. Uh, spontaneously, we could figure it out. Um, you know, as till the heart. Well, we could compute it, I believe, maybe, but uh, I don't know from, I don't know, instantaneously. If there's anyone who does know, I see Roberto's image, by the way, on my screen. <laughs> so, uh, Okay. More questions? Okay. Okay. If uh, I, I also don't have questions. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. thank you so much. Talk was very nice. Yes. And uh, perhaps crystal clear. And uh, yeah, with slow introduction and super good. Thank you very much for the talk. Let's thanks. If there's no more question, let's thanks uh, Christian again. Yeah, and with this uh, reaction. Yep. Good, thank you. Okay, and uh, everyone is welcome to join us on Thursday for the Richard Berman talk. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Okay, I. I, I Upload the recording uh, in one hour to the web page. Thanks. Good. So Bye. Okay, I can just uh, disappear, yes? Yeah, yeah, I will I will close the session in a second. One, two, three. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.